Variety Hour. We're here, happy. John Meyer is here as our guest. Yeah, it's here! Woo! Thank you, Jeff. Hey, John, great to see you. Thank you, yeah. welcome. Let me uh, just uh, move this guy over your way and uh, Yeah, just uh, get myself a little bit uh, together there. Whew. Yes, we are. We're back, and uh, you, you probably won't notice that I've lost my breath because I, uh, I will we'll cut to a commercial or something here, maybe. Oh, we're live, aren't we? Are we live? I'm just checking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Welcome. This is. The Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. Uh, I'm your host, Jeff Dodge. We're here for uh, season two. Thank you so much for being here. Um, as I said, John Meyer of Band Jam Productions is here. He's right there, actually. Yes. And uh, we're, we're going to uh, talk to him in just a second. Uh, I just wanted to go, well, actually, since you are here, John, I'll, I'll bring you in on the discussion. Uh, usually, we have lint chocolate. Sitting in on guitar, uh, yeah. Matt, yeah. Matt, Sweet right. Rage, yeah. yeah. Mr. Mr. Stephen Sibila on the bass, as always. That's that's a nice shirt you're wearing, Steve. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, of course the rockin' Mr. Rich Reese on the skins, that musical director. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well, trying trying something new. It was uh, just recently a birthday too. Wasn't That's it? right. Yeah, we'll we'll have to do a, a birthday sing along. Um, but yeah, uh, so John Meyer is here, and, and usually we would uh, ask you about who you are and what you're doing. But I think we're going to try something a little different tonight. We're going to just go into our political number, and we'll kind of build off of that because I do have uh, a lot of sponsorships, and yeah, actually, as you can see. Um, it, they, they moved us to Monday nights. Uh, there's uh, a bunch of Chachi reruns, I guess. Joni loves Chachi reruns. And uh, so there's a lot of pressure on us to, um, we had to give up the Tuesday night thing. So uh, we are now on Mondays, the last Monday of every month. We're happy to be here. And then if you uh, catch TDP TV on Tuesdays, We'll get to see Joni still loves Chachi. I, who they, do they have the original? Do you know David? Is the original uh, players? I, I got him. Aaron Moran. I don't know. Uh, Scott and Aaron back together again. Back oh, with yeah. Scott. Scott Bayo. It'll be huge, as they say. Anyway, so we got that coming up. Uh, TV, TDP TV, Tuesday nights, uh, and. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, usually we do this uh, political bit uh, to open things up, and so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, look at some uh, ideas I had here, uh, because, you know, well, okay, let's, let's just get down to it. It's January, it's the last Monday of January, and uh, I, I voted for Jill Stein. I did not vote for Donald Trump. Um, but he's, he's now our president, and uh, I have to say, Rich, uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm getting into this idea of this carnage thing. It's like, right. uh, it's kind of punk rock, isn't it? Well, in that, you know, all of his talk about the inner cities and everything it would be more appropriate for a discussion in the 80s. I guess it could be like punk rock in that regard. Yeah, but, uh, ex exactly. Um, I mean, he campaigned on Carnage. He's bringing us Carnage. Right. It's what the people want, you know? It's Carnage. Is, is that what the people I guess so. Yeah, give them Carnage. Sound. If the people want Carnage, give them Carnage. I think they, they're figuring on they get to see Jesus more quickly this way. So. But, you know, there's, I, you know, I'm not that I would be saying this, uh, but, well, maybe I am saying this. There, there are some out there that don't believe in Jesus and... To, or they believe in another god, or they believe in Cthulhu. I'm uh, no, pretty, pretty sure everybody who voted for him believes in Jesus. Or they like they miss their grandparents. They want to like see their grandparents in heaven, or something. But yeah. I just... What happens though? My point is, what happens if it's just carnage and it's, that's all there is? Oh, but like no death. 
Well, I guess it's kind of like this series that Jamila and I started called Vikings. Oh. I kind of feel it's like set in 791. Wait, you guys created and, that one? That's you guys? Well, we did. We, we watched Oh, you started it. watching? Started oh. Watching it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes a little more it's sense. Awesome. It's awesome. Like, yeah. And it's and I think it's it's like the past becomes present, you know? It's one of those things. You know, I'm mostly Norwegian in background. Oh, I, so the Iceland visit is a little bit of a... a no, we just thought that through. would be a good place to go. It was nice and quiet and pretty, but, you know, Norwegians were kind of like, you know how Mormons all claim Joseph Smith as an ancestor? Well, we claim Leif Erikson in, okay. in the same way. Like, you ask any Norwegian worth his... This is true, I'm Norwegian. Right? John, and, and a descendant of Leif Erikson, right? Did your I grandparents tell you that? I don't know if it's true or not, but I always say that. Yeah. John, what were you brought up uh, with Leif? What were you told about the legends of Leif Erikson? That he beat Columbus and everyone else. Right, like in a more or less just in the race to discover, or yeah. or was there a, a yeah, I mean, I guess he was person like a, on person. You know, he's like thing. a brutal Viking or something. I don't know what I'm talking about. I heard he beat him. This race. is this is just <laughs> fragments Bonsai. from childhood. I have no yes. idea. Yes, it's just uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, Norwegian, Leif Erikson, Viking, uh, <coughs> America first, and that legend has it. See, I'm I'm right. Skyrish, and and so uh, my legend is comes through uh, Catholic. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, I understand there was a lot of musical abuse in your family. <laughs> Terrible music yeah, abuse. Uh, yeah, but that's another episode. That's actually a series we might be developing in a while. I heard it's actually going to be on OPB. <laughs> yes, the musical abuse of the Dodge family. Yeah. It goes back three generations. Um, Rent from the Schnitzer family. So, well, not from them. Uh, from my my inheritance. Uh, so, I just wanted to say there's... there's uh, this intellectual side to some of the um, slogans that Trump's been throwing out there. And I don't know if you noticed that. There is an intellectualism going on. Um, take, for instance, the slogan, uh, Make America Great Again. Right? Right? Make America Great Again. And you'll dig this. It's like the leaf thing. I was a history major, and, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> when was America ever really great? I mean, definitely before the Europeans got here, maybe, but I mean, it, it hasn't been before. sooner. It's well, the, the old days, they like to think of, you know, they're, they're hearkening back to the 50s just like Reagan did, but you know, the tax brackets were like back then. Yes. Your top federal tax income tax bracket was 90%. Union membership was stronger than ever. Yes, and you, you are proving my point, Rich. Right, but I think they just, they want the sexism and racism from that era. No, so, it's more than that. Really? I think what, what he's saying intellectually is to make America... Well, I was, I was going through history. There is one period we were great. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Great Depression, right? Right. So he's trying Ooh. to make America Great Depression again. We led the world in Great that Depression state, again. Yeah. Well, it's more than that. I mean, it's really pretty brilliant because our country's never been tested any harder than surviving the Great Depression. Mm. You know, and it, it made our moral fabric and our culture just <laughs> great. You know, like Tony the Tiger might say. That's right, and it sure bore itself out in our upbringing. Well, in that generation, they, they had to go through it. Right. Well, they didn't have to. Oh! They didn't have to. You're right, because the baby boomer generation didn't go through the Great Depression. I looked right. up Wikipedia, and it wasn't actually them. Right. It was, uh, it was their parents' generation. It wasn't. See, I was always told, you know, it's uphill each way. Oh, no. Hard work. No. But that wasn't them. They went through the, like you were talking about, the Eisenhower period. Oh, sure. You should ask your dad what kind of car he had in high school, but it was a damn sight nicer than any of us even had. I, well, but, you know, uh, he helped me uh, get a Datsun 710. Basically. He has 710. That's I, super nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like an old Maxima. It was great. It yeah. was great. So, um, you know, I just wanted to point out a few of those things and that, uh, well, we've, we've got some... Uh, some music sort of plan to, to help America get through this transitional period we are as we try and make America Great Depression again. So, uh, with that, uh, let's see. I uh, already did the Joni Loves Chachi of Tuesday night. We're Mondays, last Mondays, last Tuesdays, Joni and Chachi again. Um, oh, and uh, David, I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, I guess uh, TDP TV wants us to. You know, Marvel and DC are getting into the uh, superhero thing. It's just taking everything. So we're, I guess we're trying to develop our own 
superheroes. Um, we've got one we're working on called Fire Hawk. Um, our uh, associate Scotty P has uh, forwarded some ideas, so let's take a look at uh, Scotty's ideas about the superhero Firehawk, only on TDP TV. gentlemen from fan jam productions the one the only john meyer yay so uh john thank you for being here thank you for, thank you for sitting for the intro no, yeah i'm so excited to be here yeah uh so um how how did you get here how did I get here? Uh, through David Craig. Did you, did you guys bike together? or? No, no. Uh, we used to gather at uh, a, an event. Um, it was once a month called uh, Attack of the Flicks. Oh, I've been to this thing. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's yes. kind, of, kind of a kind of legendary yeah. everybody that, yeah. that would go to it I uh, definitely re remembers it fondly it's the uh, curious comedy mm -hmm. club, right? mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, uh, and uh, people who went frequently would, would, it would it would basically inspire others to it inspired everyone to make at least one film a month because you don't want you don't want to show up mm -hmm. to attack of the place with nothing right you don't want to show up as just an observer you know mm -hmm. and so it was a period of lots of no budget films being made humor and drama and music videos, everything, everything. It, it ran yeah. the gamut from what it I remember. It was the gamut. Yeah. There was yeah. nothing that was that dominated. It wasn't, uh, it was, you never knew what you were going to see. Yeah. Now, were you one of the founders of this no. or just a participant? No, I was just a, I was just a mega fan. I was at the very first one when it was actually called Suck My Click. Okay, right. And they, Whoa. And they, yeah, yep, exactly. And that's why they had to change it because uh, they could have put ad space or something like that in a, in a certain paper or whatever. I, it's 2017 very risque yeah know, yeah especially for things like the mercury no, it started really renegade though it was you know it was like there was i i saw it from a from a, uh, a poster i don't know how you thought heard about it first or what your first one was but i saw from a poster tacked to a pole very old school style mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that like filmmaker showdown right on yes, i mean yes. it marked it as like this like big showdown event and it was it was like a pack well, no. So at that point, you did was have you been doing film before that, or I started doing it by uh, a web series called The Free Box that I wrote and directed um, in Portland for like two and a half years, and I, and and, and we were, the episodes were ten minutes long. They're all on YouTube. You can check it out. Cool, um, cool. And, yeah, there's there's 27 of them. So we went all it quite a ways with it, and. They just kind of got a little bit better each one because you could see that me learning filmmaking, you know. And I just, I mean, none of them were even in HD till the very end, you know. But this is like early on. But it's but, all sounding very familiar. You know, uh, and then I was shooting, 98 to 2002 type. Yeah. Then I was shooting a lot of music videos for my friends' bands around that time too, just handing out stuff at the live shows, some kind of together, learning, and learning all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's just that was my that was my education. Uh, and then then I started doing professionally uh, at the end of that whole run. I see, I see. And well, uh, actually, we uh, we have one of your music videos queued up here. I do you want to take a look at it? Uh, yeah, you, you want me to tell you what you're going to see for a second? Yes. Why don't you give us a setup? Yeah. So, uh, I, uh, uh, my wife uh, Rachel and I make up Van Jam Productions. And Van we, Jam Productions. Yeah, that's that, that's uh, and uh, that's our company. And uh, we lived a year in Puerto Rico after we got married. And it was a little town, a little surfing town called Rincon. And they had uh, one uh, dominant, they had a few, a few bands in the town, but there was one dominant indie rockish band that we got to be good friends with. And we made my music video. And so here, this, these are our good friends, you know, uh, the dysfunction from Puerto Rico when we lived the, in the town. We didn't just go there and shoot it, like we, we lived it. And so all, all the locations around, was something that we were familiar with just because we lived in the town and it was, it was really so cool. you went back to shoot this thing. no 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 we didn't no, we shot it, we shot it while you're living yeah when it was just on whatever equipment i had yeah. with me which wasn't much you yeah. know it was just it was very very minimal but uh 
I'm very proud of it. I think it's one of the best videos I've, I've ever made. Not Maybe not the best, but it's in my top three. And uh, it was really low budget. And just one of those magic ones that just worked out. I thought it was, I, I, you know, I uh, I just get, took a quick look to see if it was working. So, But I, it, it looked great. The color sure. was beautiful. Oh, you know, see the beginning and all. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, take a look. The dysfunction, uh, the name of the song is? Johnny. Johnny, here we go.
the darn interns leaving the audio monitors on again. Uh, but wow, that was that was a great video. Thank you. Thank you for, for bringing that. Yeah. And what an amazing story. Uh, and the distraction comes to uh, the United States, uh, to the East Coast? The dysfunction. The dysfunction. Yeah. I'm the distraction. Yeah. They're the dysfunction. Yeah, they, they, they play uh, around New York and uh, New Jersey and all that. I, I see on their Facebook. I, I keep up with it. Excellent, yeah. excellent. They always um, post some videos and stuff. It's fun. Well, and on that note, I was told you I uh, used to have a roommate named Jeff Dodd. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a few of us out there. there yeah, there are, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm the Jeff S. Dodd. Uh, I don't know what his name is, I can't remember. Sometimes you put Jeff Dodd, and it'll be like these vans and things will come up with the Google Pics. And these other picks that are not me. They're not me. What happened when Richard Darge called you? Oh, Richard Darge. That was a that was a good okay. <laughs> uh, he, he, Richard Darge actually is a filmmaker in LA. I used to um, work with this guy that Lint knows, um, Mr. Sargent. You know. We used to have an operation called Darge Productions. So we took Dodge and Sargent and mixed that right, together. Yeah. Thought it was better than Sarge. Oh. So much. So I was the porno. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we didn't have a lot of takers on that, and masturbatory films were not really popular then. It's before Snapchat. Um, but anyway, uh, the the point is, uh, there's there's a lot of Jeff Dodges out there, and uh, I'm one of them. And uh, and what was your Jeff Dodge? Did did are you sure it wasn't me? Did we never live together? Right? You, you aren't an Oregon guy. Are yeah, you? No, I'm quite positive. That, wait. No, no, no. Okay. Definitely not. Because not. I, I barely remember who I'm living with, yeah. right? Oh, hi, honey. We're, uh, good. Did I say that? Um, the uh, uh, point is, uh, I, well, what, uh, what happened to him? Was he a filmmaker friend of yours? No, or? no, no. This, uh, this was back in... Back in the day, uh, when I was shooting the free box, he just was a roommate of mine, and he just put up with my filmmaking shenanigans once a week. What do you do with filmmaking and roommates? That's I. Oh, well, actually, I learned some tough lessons during that time, and uh, Jeff's a uh, kind enough of dude that you know we never got got yeah. into it, into it. But yeah, you know, I made it was. You know, I would. Uh, I learned. I learned how to manage that, and 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 I learned that you just have to ensure that the roommates are not around. They're just doing. That they're off. See, I I I have. lived with roommates, that, and we were doing this Darge thing, and yeah. they they held a trial, and they ousted me. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. Because you, you need, you know, you're bothering them, and you need them to be perfectly quiet for yes. your thing to work. Yes, exactly. Hey, gentlemen, that's what. It, Audio is not doing so hot. We just got a comment from Mr. Partington, and I checked it myself on my phone. You can barely pick up your voices. Oh. Oh, well. We'll take care of it in the post. Well, let's juice yeah. it up. Tell him to turn it up. All right. The audio. Yes, yeah. Robert, just turn it up out there. <laughs> juice it. Woo! Jeez. It Everyone's a critic these days. We're just talking about poor audio, and then that happened? Well, I've got this, like, uh, sound guy thing that always Ew. kicks in. It was like a roommate. Uh, well, and and uh, that, and then of course, let's get to uh, the uh, uh, the Czechoslovakian hit, uh, uh, the bikini beans. Yeah, hot, hot bikini beans. Yeah, hot, actually, bikini, hot bikini beans, beans has, has a new popularity these days for a very different reason. But the original one, a lot of people, um, the new fans actually don't know this. Uh, the original hot bikini beans were made about five years ago now, six. Six, seven years ago? Ooh, Wait, yours or someone else's? No, mine. mine. Yours. Yeah, so yeah. your first one is mm -hmm. six years old. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Now, how did you come up with the idea for that? Well, we saw the Hot Bikini um, brew um, on Hawthorne, and then we connected some dogs and noticed they were the bikini barista, the bikini barista, and they were, they were every, everywhere, and, they were, and it was a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so as well, well, see, I didn't even know there was one on Hawthorne. I've oh, usually yeah. seen them in the rural communities. Oh, no, there's one on Hawthorne. It has been for about five to six years now. Okay. They're still in operation. Yeah. Um, they're nice yeah, people. I have nothing ill against them. I yeah. just, I just thought, thought that it was uh, 
I mean, I think it's kind of ridiculous. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and we, we have an episode that we're going to look at, uh, which I, I, if I think it's the one I'm thinking of, the... Uh, the oh, meth yeah. one, right? Sure, yeah. So okay. a little preface for the episode yeah. yes. is is that because it is an episodic thing now. Uh, the, the episode before this, the and let me just cut in right here. Uh, they 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 are great. Uh, I would I would highly recommend everyone watch every one of them. They're hilarious. And season two is coming. So yeah, just a quick. They're all plug. on YouTube. Hot bikini beans. It's easy Hot bikini beans. Yeah. So uh, in the episode prior to this, uh, a large bag of meth got mistaken mixed in with the sugar. Yes. And so that, that'll help out people who understand what's happening. Right. So uh, here we go. We're going to take a look at hot bikini beans. some cream and sugar in this cup real fast. I don't have time to wait in line. I've got places to go people to listen to. Hey, clerk, you better straighten this thing out. Do you hear me? Oh. Clyde, I just put a check in the mail. $30 plus five in interest. What the hell are you talking about? Look, if you just give me the sugar, I can do it myself. It's fine. You're pushing in the wrong neighborhood here, hey, clerk. This is Clyde Stale Country. All the way down the river. You got that? Clyde Stale's down by the river. What, what a great uh, episode. Um, 
uh, let's talk about that ending. Uh, I, I, to me, it reminded me of uh, Platoon. That is precisely the reference we were going for. Not everyone gets it, but uh, we're always pleased when people do. And and uh, it was uh, uh, Behringer and, and Defoe and the whole kind of Christ-like, uh, the Christianity of Oliver Stone, um, sort of melting out of his body. Vietnam seemed to kill okay. him. Okay. That's yeah. One way. That's, that's one way. Yeah. But uh, I, I, that was my film professor taught us to do was just sort of speculate madly. Yeah. That's why I'm here at TDP TV. Yeah. All right. Well, John, I want to thank you again so much. Will you uh, come back uh, again when you have something new? Uh, perhaps you can bring your wife, and we could have a yeah. more of a van jam. Yeah, she's out of town right now. Uh, uh, on, an, on a movie, another another movie set. So. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Perhaps when when it's uh -huh. uh, better at, at a time where your both schedules line up. Um, I'll be doing some singing with you later too. Right? Well, and that's the main thing. I want to make sure is that you yeah, can right. come back and join us for the the final sing along yeah, song because yeah, right we got a special one for the time. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna take a little uh, quick look at what I did. That we, we Portland kind of went nuts and uh, the snow apocalypse thing. I'm, I made a little short film. Here it is. This is. Uh... Day 34 of snow apocalypse. The snow has been here for 34 days, and uh, there has been no information from the mayor, or if we have a mayor, or a city council right now. Uh, I don't think there's a government in operation. It's really weird. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find some answers out here. It's like. It's like a war zone out here, except there's nothing warm about it. No one's really shooting guns or anything, but uh, it's like that scene in Red Dawn almost, uh, you know. Wow, look at it. They, they got everything. This is creepy. You know, or, or maybe the ending where they end up uh, fighting in the snow. They, this is insane. They got rid of the sidewalks here somehow. I'm in the middle of the street. So crazy. Get my sidewalk, what they've done to it. Far out. It appears the spring thaw has begun. Let's uh, let's take a look at it. Well, it's not really spring. We are finally seeing rain. Rain has hit the Portland metro area. Icicles are melting. Yeah, let's take a look at that.
that's the question. Well, I'll tell you, um, I'm doing pretty good. Would you ask me? Monday, from Van Jam Productions, John Meyer makes a special live appearance. And Lynn Chocolate sits in with the band. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like, uh, kids to play with guns, that kind of a thing. Oh, we don't want the kids to play with no guns, so they should lock the gun and give the kids things to do. On the season premiere of the Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. Revolution Band with Lynn Chocolate City. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, cool. Well, uh, uh, we, uh, we have the one, the only, the illustrious rooster himself, Mr. David Farrell, has joined us, surprisingly, here at the... Uh, rooster. Rooster. rooster? Well, I, uh, it's uh, this name we used to call you when you weren't looking. <laughs> it's right. a bunch of, uh, bunch of Year of the Dogs ganging up on a Year of the Rooster. What we're prone to do. Good to see you again. Good How are to you? See you too. I, so I wanted to talk basketball. About okay. This one game. No, no. Actually, I wanted to talk about what you've been up to. Uh, uh, not playing any basketball, actually. It's really? Yeah, I know. It's weird. Who Who are you rooting for these days? Oh, I like the Milwaukee Bucks. They're great people. Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, mm. Who are some Buck legends? There's like great ones from the uh, back in the day. Yeah, Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson. Cindy Moncrief. Cindy Moncrief. Yeah, yeah. What and how is their record this year? They are just a little bit better than our hometown Blazers. Okay. But they get the Greek freak. Okay. okay. And they are fast and furious. They're tall and lean, and uh, they're an exciting team. I really enjoy it. Almost as much as our University of Oregon Ducks. Oh, the most exciting team in the league, for sure. And, uh, really? I, I heard they're doing pretty good this year. Is that right? Win over Colorado on Saturday really would have propelled them to the sixth seed. Ooh. But, well, they had a lot of uh, issues with their coach, I thought, and they had some scandal. Um, we're talking about basketball, Jeff. I'm so, and and I just just to let you know, TDP TV has actually threatened to increase our budget if I get kind of the sports talk thing going. And I've been I've been studying this guy John Canzano, and that's what he does. He kind of like you know puts a little thing in there, a little uh, uh, the, little spice, little the wig head, the wig headed truth. Yeah. Well, I. But your hair looks great, by the way. Thanks, I appreciate that. And on that note... Anyway, uh, what are we here for? Well, I, I heard you've been uh, out there uh, producing. You're not directing this one, but you're producing. you got a new film out. Uh, I do, I do, I do. It's going to be out soon. It's called Cinco Pesos, because I thought it would be, you know, more pretentious to use another language. Can I do that? Um, five pennies. Yeah, five cents. It's a, a suicide comedy. You know, I think it's going to go over really well. You've kind of been specializing in suicide comedy for a while, haven't you? I've been working on it for years. Did uh, the movie Heathers ever have an influence on, on what you did there? Negative, no, not whatsoever. I thought that was a great movie. 
I'm sure it was. I'm cool. confident it was. I don't know. Well, about so it. Uh, you you did not direct this one, but you produced it. Now, how did was there a jostling? Was it kind of like a, yes? The, there was definitely jostling. We're not I, not talking uh, like Heaven's Gate jostling. Well, we produced. I I would say it was produced very well. The direction, the director dropped the ball at the last minute, and. Um, so there was some tension, but I think we're happy with the product. Are you and the director still on speaking terms? I would suggest that yeah, we have to be in that you know schizophrenic way. Because you know that's that's uh, Bob Evans. I guess had a guy uh, tailing Coppola around for The Godfather. When he dropped the ball, they're gonna have this guy direct it. Yeah, mine. It wasn't that kind of a situation. <clears throat> no, this is more like an alter ego type thing. Like a fight club type thing, almost. Very fight yes, club. Exactly. Okay, exactly. you know when a when a film in the the filmmakers uh, get into this kind of fight club mentality, nothing can win but the film. It it, it makes for great great action drama, uh, boring whatever you're trying to get after. It's. Fighting is good for film. I find. I'm, John. You're still around here, aren't you? What? What do you find that yeah. fighting is a good or bad process of filmmaking? I love fighting. I mean, it's well, so you fun. don't love it, but it just seems that sometimes the only way to get to the result is through fighting. It seems in hindsight, I would say, but you don't plan on fighting. Yeah. No. Ooh. Oh. Well, I, no one told me that part. I <laughs> kind of always put. Um, well, geez, you know, uh, speaking of which, we, uh, we got our, our good friend David is back in the studio producing, and we're going to uh, take a look at uh, something he did here called Art Racks, another Portland Orbit Report. Report. These days, wherever a bike needs to be locked up, you'll find an art rack. People have determined that regular racks are boring, so most bike racks seem to be jazzed up, colorful, or whimsical in some way, which sometimes leads me to wonder if some of them are bike racks at all. The need to impress bike riders with unique designs seems to be on the rise. Some racks are too abstract to be functional, while others closely resemble the product the accompanying business is selling. Then there are bike racks that look like bikes. It's hard to tell if it's a visual cliché, an ironic statement or camouflage. But bikes and bike parts do make cool bike racks. Fabulous art racks make the chore of locking a bike up entertaining. I only wish I had more bikes so I could have even more encounters with art racks. Oh, and we are back. We are back. And uh, man, what what a great show! Uh, it was it was a wonderful opportunity to um, host a sort of surprise guest, a real guest. I, I mean, everyone's a real guest. Like chocolate. I I just meant it was really exciting to have such a legitimate filmmaker on in our presence. We're just kind of illegitimate filmmakers. Very no, 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 no. We're bastards. But uh, the point is, uh, as I'm always saying, we're gonna say good night. Uh, there's a new a new mayor in town, so I'm gonna I've been told to kinda yeah. let off. But you know, honey, I gotta tell you, did you did you see my snow pop come here? Uh, Jamila has joined us. My my lovely, beautiful wife. Jamila is in the audience. Here, why don't you step through? Wave Lou. We've started a second season. And uh, uh, so Mayor Ted Wheeler didn't do crap about the snow. I just thought that, that was a point to me. Hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, let's, let's say goodnight, Jeff. Goodnight, Jeff.